I found out what Hype House is, and for the first time in my life, I feel old. Hey guys, Jeremy Jacobitz from Brunch Boys here, and if you're new to the channel and new to this series, Influencer Secrets, it's all about me talking about social media and influencers and tech and, and pop culture and literally whatever is on my mind. And today, we are talking about TikTok and we are talking about Hype House. So this all started, uh, I follow uh, Taylor Renz, who is the um, like social, I have her title right in front of me. She is the internet culture reporter at the New York Times. And she put up a post maybe a week ago of a selfie in a bathroom. And it said, and I quote, um, if you're over the age of 21 and you recognize this bathroom, please call 911. You may be addicted to the internet. And I was like, huh. I don't have a fucking clue what this is. Bathroom, I don't know, no one must know what this is. And then instantly a million comments be like, oh my God, oh my God, hype house, hype house, hype house. And I was like, what, what is this? What are they, what, what, what? Like my brain couldn't comprehend that all these people knew what something was and I didn't. So anyway, so Taylor actually wrote an article for New York Times that I highly recommend you check out all that hype house. And just to summarize it quickly, um, there's been a trend the past few years uh, for influencers to actually live in houses together in LA, like these giant mansions they get together. And it started, I think it's like a YouTube creators thing, it's moved on a little bit, but uh, because TikTok has been trending, uh, there's a house of like TikTok monster creators that live together and they called it Hype House and they've all been able to grow together, grow together. So anyway, but like, my soul was hurting me that for the first time I was like, not only did I not even know what this is, but like, I don't even really get it. So like, I think you guys have seen me on stories uh, talking a lot about TikTok because I just think like one, it's my profession to like be on the internet to create content. So when something new comes along, like I should try and figure out how to create content for that too. But two, I just, I'm fascinated by the internet. I'm fascinated by social media. Like one of the reasons why I've been able to succeed on Instagram is just because I'm I'm obsessed with it. I just love it. I love these new platforms and being creative in new ways that something else didn't give us the opportunity to do, which is why I think Instagram is amazing, obviously, uh, but, but which is really why I've been fascinated by TikTok and just trying to figure out if like, okay, what's working on TikTok and why does this work? So anyway, this has all been on my brain for the past few weeks and I read the article and it went through like a, <laughs> it went through like a wave of emotions because I think instinctually I was like, what? I, I don't even understand. What, what are these people doing? And I was, I don't know if I was upset about it, but I was just like, they're, it, it, it just hurt me that I didn't get it. But then as I read the article, I was feeling a lot better about it. And I sort of thought about where these kids are at now and where I was four years ago. And listen, in like two months, they've been able to gain millions of followers on TikTok. I obviously have not been able to do that in the years and years of running Brunch Boys, but I've been able to like grow a nice audience and have uh, you know attention thrown at me because of it. So I understand them in that place. And it put myself back four years ago in the place that I was five years ago when I was like in my late twenties and Brunch Boys is happening. And the, the, the maturity of these kids and the creativity of these kids and the fact that they are all so collaborative is actually really nice. It's something like I think back, I'm like, would I have done that at the beginning of Brunch Boys? Like I think, in the like little weird food Instagram community, we were together. We would go eat a lot more back in the day because there were only like 10 of us and we would have meals together. But, and still to this day, I try and help out people with their content if I believe in them and they ask me and I feel like I could help them. I'm, I'm always happy to because I just, I, I enjoy that. It sort of brings it back to my TV roots a little bit. But it wasn't this whole giant collaborative thing of realizing that if we do stuff together, we all grow together. And the savviness that these kids have and the ability to put aside egos to grow together and experience these things together, I was like, wow, that's really nice. And these aren't adults doing it. These are kids. These are they're 17, 18, 19. God knows how young they are. Kids creating, listen, do I super understand their content? No. But like I said, not only do I feel old, but that's because I am old. Um, but I think it's cool that they've been able to tap into the audience, understand what this audience wants and continue to deliver to them with this audience. And listen, the audience is very, very young, which is why I sort of don't get it. But I was just thinking, wow, that's actually really cool and really amazing. And there's no reason to be angry about it. There's no reason to be jealous about it. There's no reason any of that. Like they are taking what a little bit of what I have built and make it even bigger. And I just think that's so 
cool. Like the opportunities, like when I started, there were no opportunities. It was just weird and random. I just wanted to sort of make some videos. There's no idea to build an audience. There's no idea to make any money. There's no idea to get fame or any of that stuff. So, but these kids have grown up with that idea. It's been ingrained in their, in the brains, like it's possible. And what I liked about it too was they made mention of like all these things you sort of have to be to succeed, not only in the hype house, but like as an influencer nowadays, especially younger influencer on TikTok. It was, in a, you have to have energy and be creative and do this. But at the end of the day, they're like, you have to be weird. And I thought about that and I was like, you know, I, I talked about this video a few weeks ago of like, I turned 32 and decided it was okay to be weird. These kids are teenagers and they've realized that being weird is okay. And I was just like, wow, that's really, really amazing. And I have the utmost respect for all these TikTok kids and all these younger influencers that are doing something different and being unique and being themselves and being able to you know, attract an audience. I think that's really, really, really cool. So do I still feel weird that I'm old now? Yeah, I feel weird that I'm older. But like, you know, a friend said to me, she was like, you shouldn't know what Hype House is. You are a 32 year old man. And that still sort of bothered me because I still feel like, oh, I'm, I'm hip or, you know, whatever and cool. But it, it was weird. Like I think about this episode a lot of South Park. Um, I forget exactly what it is, but pretty much the idea is when you, when you grow up and you start at a certain age, everything, everything sounds like shit, everything is shit. And like they made it very literal in South Park because that's what they do. Um, but I've sort of been thinking about that a lot. Like I, again, going back to my TikTok journeys, like I've been like on TikTok, you pick music to put whatever, and it'll go to like the top, the trending hip hop songs, like put on a, a video I made. I'm like, okay, and let me, let me see like what song speaks to me. And I'll listen to all of them. And I'm like, I don't get it. I don't get any songs. I don't like any of these songs. And I'm like, holy shit, have I turned that age where everything new sounds like shit to me and everything that I, that I would have appreciated was younger like, like, was it ever good? Is it good now? What's wrong with me? I do find myself falling more into the, the trap of, I just want to watch what I like and not find new things, which sort of sucks. Like when I turn on the TV, I'm just like, let me just watch The Simpsons, watch Bob's Burgers and watch CNN and, and watch wrestling. Just watch these few things that I know and love as opposed to find new things. Because all the new stuff sucks. And I think that's like not a good perspective to have. And I think just like absorbing myself in a little bit of this TikTok world and reading this article in the New York Times and thinking about it, I think like I need to do a better job of not being that bitter old man because I think it's a very easy trap to fall into and just appreciating all of it. And that's the, that's the amazing part of life is new things come and appreciate it and find new things and experience new things and don't say no to new things. So at the end of the day, like I said, roller coaster of emotions, but very, very excited. And hopefully I can figure out TikTok. I think there's a place on TikTok for a 32 year old man. Maybe. All right. So, uh, like always, I uh, remember to like this video, share this video, uh, wherever you found this video, make sure you follow me and comment below and let me know what you think. Are you on TikTok? Do you understand TikTok? Did you know what hype house was before I told you?